Okay, so this is one of my, on the sandier soils that I have, one of my more difficult challenging fields. Um, I'm quite happy with um, what I'm seeing here. Um, soybeans are looking really, really good, despite the fact that we're having a really, really wet season again. So to give you a bit of background on this field, I've planted uh, cover crops here before, two years. Um, last season was a bit wet to come in to plant the cover crop. So that's why there isn't a cover crop, uh, wasn't a cover crop growing before this soybean crop. But um, what I want to show you is, I don't know if you can see that on this video, but the uh, earthworm activity. I'm not sure what the English term is for what you call that, all those pieces of... Uh, I think it's earthworm casting if I'm correctly also but these beans even though they've been hammered with a lot of water uh, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing here so this soils these are really sandy soils um, everybody reckons you can't no-till um, sandy soils but I beg to differ I'm getting really good results um, I want to show you so this is the boundary fence on the other side the neighboring farm, the guy that's uh, working on this farm, he reckons no-till doesn't work. So I'm really happy for him with the way that his convention conventional tilling methods are going at the moment. Um, I hopefully he's going to get the planting done this year. Um, there's even more rain forecasted. So, but yeah, um, struggling, he's struggling to get into the fields. Uh, I really hope that he gets a few days worth of sunshine so that he can get in as well. Um, I prefer the advantage of the no-till, um, getting into the fields on time, ready to plant, versus there's nothing wrong going conventional. Uh, each guy is entitled to what he thinks works best for him. But uh, I just want to show you the difference between two practices here. Um, conventional, still not planted, versus my no-till. These fields... I think I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing here.